Alleluia! Christ is risen! The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia! Greetings, people of all saints, in the name of the crucified and risen one on this Easter day. We are not able to celebrate Easter as many of us have thought. We are sheltering in place, worshiping from our homes this Easter day. But we are doing so together across those physical spaces of separation. And I invite you, if you have not already, to open the accompanying Order for Common Prayer at home. You may want to listen to or sing, Jesus Christ is risen today, and then hear the readings read by Rod Remt and Pam Remt are readings from Acts and Colossians. You may then want to listen to this video, the gospel reading and homily, and then return to the order for prayer for more song and prayer. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed, alleluia. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. After the Sabbath, as the first day of the week was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord descending from heaven came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning and his clothing white as snow. For fear of him, the guards shook and became like dead men. But the angel said to the women, Do not be afraid. I know that you are looking for Jesus, who was crucified. He is not here, for he has been raised, as he said. Come, see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples he has been raised from the dead and indeed he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him. This is my message to you. So the women left the tomb quickly with fear and great joy and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly Jesus met them and said, Greetings. And they came to him, took hold of his feet, and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. The Gospel of the Lord.
wonder this story pulses with fear. But fear affects the guards and the women differently. The guards who have been stationed to keep watch over the tomb and prevent any possible grave robbing, these guards are presumably well equipped. They are completely dressed in their guard uniforms and they are carrying their weapons ready to defend the tomb or at least themselves. Yet all this show of force is no match for the fear that hits them like a bullet. These strong men shake like autumn leaves. They become like dead men. They are immobilized by their fear. And some of you know what that is like. Fear is pervasive these days, and for good reason. COVID-19 has reset our world, interrupting what was normal just a few weeks ago, and threatening many lives. This virus is the worst kind of enemy because it is invisible at first, and then it is all too visible, spiking our temperatures and taking away our breath. And even if we are not wondering in what hospital or what church building or what cardboard box we will find the bodies of our loved ones, still fear is finding its way into our homes. And how could it not when we read the stories that we do and watch the stories on the news of shared ventilators and mile-long lines to the food bank, and 16 million Americans already filed for unemployment in just three weeks. And that's not to mention all the fears that were there before, the ones that were quite familiar to us. The fear that a grandchild is struggling, struggling badly and not getting the help they need. The fear that the next time we reach out to a loved one who has dementia, they might not know who we are. Or the fear that a relationship has been damaged and we do not know if it can be put back together. We have had plenty of reasons to fear before the coronavirus and before earthquakes and angels. And fear can do to us just what it did to those guards, paralyze us physically, emotionally, spiritually. We stop being able to do the simple tasks of our lives, work, sleep, eat, care for the people who need us. But in our gospel story today, fear does not immobilize the two women in the way that it does the guards. It's not that the women are able to shake off fear entirely, keep it at bay with the right personal protective equipment. But after the earthquake and the angel, they are energized. They run from the tomb with fear, but also great joy. Full up with this joyful fear, they practically run into the risen Christ. It's as if the fear that they have swallowed like a seed, has cracked open, and joy is sprouting out from that seed. The fear in these women somehow contains a 
great joy. So listen, three things happen to Mary Magdalene and the other Mary that may help them. First, the angel and the risen Christ speak words of comfort to them. Do not be afraid. They hear these words once, twice like a parent calming a child after a nightmare. Don't be afraid, sweetheart. It's okay. I'm here. You are safe. Do not be afraid. It's not a command or a demand. It's an invitation, a kind of prayer. You do not need to let Fear take over your heart and immobilize you. The women taste these words. They savor them and swallow them like medicine. If the angel and Jesus himself assure us, we do not have to be afraid. We can start to believe that. Second, when the risen Lord appears and speaks to the two women, he speaks of his disciples as his brothers. Now think of that. These are the very disciples who ran away when the soldiers came. The disciples who deserted him when he needed them the most. And one of those disciples who denied even knowing him. These disciples, this pathetic bunch of cowards, Jesus calls them his brothers and pours out forgiveness in those words, acknowledging them as his beloved his family. Jesus loves these disciples despite all of their faults. Jesus is going to meet them in Galilee. And third, the angel and the risen Christ entrust these two women with the message of the resurrection. A message that will change everything and give birth to a faith that now claims some two billion people across our world. And this might not seem like such a big deal that two women are entrusted with a message until we remember that women in the ancient world were not considered valid witnesses. Women could not give legal testimony in court. They were not perceived to have the constitution or the brains to be trustworthy speakers. But the angel and Jesus himself entrust Mary Magdalene and the other Mary with this vital message. They trust them to go and tell the story, what they have seen and heard, that death was not able to hold Christ captive, that the stone was rolled away, and that 
resurrected life poured out of the tomb for the first time in their lives. These two women are treated as worthy witnesses. My siblings in Christ, my friends, on this Easter day, the message of the resurrection will not magically dissolve all of our fear. Even shouting our alleluias loudly, even tracing the cross on our forehead that was imprinted in baptism, even smelling an Easter lily in our homes, none of these things will dissolve all of the fear. And after all, fear is not necessarily an entirely bad thing. Fear is sometimes the necessary kick that keeps us alive, or at least helps us not be stupid. Fear is necessary. Yet, the message of the resurrection, the great mystery of new life in the face of death, this message can break open that seed of fear in us and allow a burst of joy to break forth. Because the angel and the risen Christ, they are not just speaking to the Marys on this Easter day. They are speaking to us, to us in our homes. They are speaking to us on this strange Easter, the likes of which we have never experienced before. They are speaking to us with their consoling voices. Do not be afraid. It is an invitation, a prayer. Fear need not take over our hearts and make us like dead people. And more, the risen one is calling us, his brothers and his sisters as well. Though, like those first disciples, we may have been less than good and faithful servants this past year. We forgot to pray. We failed to love and serve our neighbor, at least some of the time. Still, Jesus calls us his siblings, his family. However imperfect, we are still his beloved. And finally, the angel and the risen Lord have given us a task to go and tell. Like the two Marys, we are somehow worthy witnesses of the resurrection. For all our sense of inadequacy, for all our lack of understanding, for all that the resurrection remains still a great mystery. We are the witnesses whom Jesus has appointed. And so we have a job to do, to witness to a God who cracks open fear and allows joy to break forth. And even in this time of COVID-19, even in this time of fear, joy is breaking forth. It is breaking through. Communities are singing and dancing and making music on their balconies and from their doorways. And loving conversations are happening on telephones and Zoom calls and even through open windows. We are even worshiping together on this 
Easter day, though it looks like we are apart. Fear is cracking open. Joy is breaking through. And now, may the one who brought forth Jesus from the dead raise you to new life, fill you with hope, and turn your mourning into dancing. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you.